Holy flippity flip flop flap and smokes, everyone. We have a $305 trillion ticking time bomb. The global economy is drowning in debt. And this is sending people in the international monetary system to sound the alarm saying rising debt right when interest rates are rising as well and we got an inflation problem this is a recipe for disaster we also have more bad news for the banks and the white house is still scrambling to find a debt ceiling solution but this is also going to be even more bad news for the banks and you need to pay attention to this right now because your bank account could be affected your portfolio could be affected and the company you work at will be affected by this so everyone let's not waste any time let's get straight into the news the facts and the data well look at this everyone global debt nears record highs as rate hikes trigger crisis of adaption top trade body says so this is not even being hyperbolic we have a global debt crisis on our hands and these interest rates are now hitting a critical level i said once the federal reserve lifts interest rates to five percent we're going to see massive cracks in the financial system and that's what we saw we saw the banks collapse we saw the assets on the bank's balance sheet collapse then they couldn't cover the cost for all the withdrawals are going on and a lot of people think the crisis is over well no that was just a preview for a much bigger crisis that's coming look at this global debt pile grew grew by 8.3 trillion just in the first quarter to a near record high of 305 trillion. This is as the global economy faced a crisis of adaption to rapid monetary policy tightening by central bank, according to a closely watched report from the Institute of International Finance. So these numbers are getting absolutely insane, people. And in a few years, we're going to be looking not at trillions, we're going to be looking at quadrillion. And this is going to have a big effect on your purchasing power. If you think inflation is going to go away, when they're increasing the debt by eight trillion dollars just in three months you need to think again every single time they try to stimulate the economy now it's having a weaker and weaker effect and they're having to use more and more money just to get the same result for example in 2008 they issued about a trillion dollars uh, worth of stimulus with bailouts for the banks etc what they've done since 2020 they've increased uh, the amount of stimulus the amount of debt in the system by around 10 trillion and we're barely just avoiding an official recession does this tell you the economy is strong like they're saying the people's balance sheets are strong no it's showing it this is a house of cards and it's only a matter of time before one of those cards falls and the whole house of cards comes crumbling down the finance industry body said the combination of such high debt levels and rising interest rates have driven up the cost of servicing that debt triggering concerns about leverage in the financial system so that's exactly right everyone a lot of these governments took on huge amounts of debt but not just governments, corporations too. They thought interest rates would stay low forever. And so they said, maybe we can service 2% interest rate. But what's happened now? A lot of interest rates have gone to 6%. A lot of mortgage interest rates have gone to 7%. Credit card loans have gone to 23, 25%. Car loans have gone to 11, 15%. So people cannot simply afford to repay these loans. And even if they can repay these loans, well, then that money that they would have used to go out there and spend in the economy is now just simply going to go onto debt that now has a high interest rate in front of it. So now what they're worried about what's going to happen is there's going to be a massive credit crunch. There's going to be lots of defaults. And also a lot of these zombie corporations that's been surviving for the last two decades because interest rates have just been getting lower and lower and lower. A zombie corporation is someone that's not profitable, but they can just simply repay their loans and cover their expenses. Well, interest rates rising that's about to change and you'll be shocked to hear how many zombie corporations there are so with final conditions at their most restrictive levels since 2008 and 2009 financial crisis a credit crunch would prompt high default rates and a result in more zombie firms already approaching an estimated 14 percent of u.s listed firms that is crazy 14 percent of u.s listed firms also major firms are zombie corporations everyone the iif said in its quarterly global debt monitor report late wednesday and also in this report they reveal that global debt has increased 45 trillion dollars just since the pandemic started this is absolutely crazy people this cannot go on. It cannot go on without any consequences. Either we're going to have a huge crash when they lift interest rates, but even if they don't lift interest rates, we're going to see rampant inflation and we're going to see all these currencies collapse. But that's just the beginning, people. There's much, much more fundamental risk 
with the economy. They said aging population, rising healthcare costs, and substantial climate finance gaps are exerting pressure on government balance sheets. National defense spending is expected to increase over the medium term due to heightened geopolitical tensions, which would potentially affect the credit profile of both governments and corporate borrowers. So this is actually a fantastic report and they're revealing some real big risk right now. So like they said, aging population, the big, big issue the West has is a lot of the baby boomers, which were in the workforce, they're now retiring. And also too, a lot of them aren't going to be spending like they were. They're the biggest generation right now. They're going to be going to retirement. Uh, a lot of you that watch my uh, YouTube channel, you're baby boomers as well. You're not going to be spending as much because you're trying to conserve that capital in case their real financial crisis hits very, very soon. So millennials aren't having much kids. So this is going to be a massive, massive problem for the next 10 years. Another thing they mentioned, rising healthcare costs is having a big effect on the consumer and that money that they would use to spend out there in a real economy is now going on the healthcare. Now, one of the biggest risks they mentioned in this report is a geopolitical risk. The world is getting much more confrontational. There's a huge shift for global supremacy. I think some nations are starting to think that the US is losing uh, its empires, losing power, it's losing influence, and they're now trying to take a piece of the pie. And so what this is going to lead to is a huge increase in spending on defense but this will lead to more money printing, the government taking on more debt and higher inflation because we all know what happened to inflation and the government debt in World War II and I hope that doesn't happen again. If this trend continues, it will have significant implications for international debt markets, particularly if interest rates remain high for longer. Total debt in emerging markets hit a new record high of more than 100 trillion or around, listen to this, 250% of GDP up from 75 trillion in 2019. So China, Mexico, Brazil, India and Turkey were the largest upward contributors. So that's right, everyone. If interest rates stay high for longer, the Federal Reserve is saying they're not going to pause yet. There may even be more rate increases. And I think they can't stop cutting. They can't stop cutting when, you know, core or PCE inflation is still around 5%, more than double their mandate. Well, it's going to have massive consequences, not just for the US, but also the emerging markets as well. But I know what's going to affect you the most and me the most is how this is causing banking turmoil right now. Now, and they go in very in depth on what this is going to mean for the banks as well. So the rapid monetary policy tightening exposed fragile liquidity positions in a number of small and mid-sized banks in the US and led to a series of collapses and bailouts in recent months. The ensuing market panic eventually spread to Europe and forced the emergency sale of Swiss giant Credit Suisse to UBS. The IIF suggested that corporations have undergone a crisis of adaption to what it termed a new monetary regime. That's exactly right, everyone. What I think we're going to go back to is a time where people didn't want to take on debt. When you got debt, you paid it off as fast as you could because interest rates were so high. But then what we had was a period of low interest rates. So then we had a new monetary regime where it actually made sense if you could get a loan of 3%, you would take on as much debt as you can that you could afford to repay because you could take that money, invest it, and get a return of 7 or 8%. But now the interest rates, for example, a mortgage is 7%, and you can get a pretty much risk-free return in a one-month treasury paying 5%, why would you risk your money putting it in the markets and you'd probably be better off just paying off your mortgage and getting that guaranteed savings of 7%. And remember, a dollar saved is better than a dollar invested or a dollar earned because you don't pay tax on it. But listen to this warning. Given the central role of regional banks in credit intermediation in the US, worries about liquidity positions could result in a sharp contraction in lending to some segments, including underbank household and businesses. So like I've been warning about everyone, we are going to see a credit crunch and it's going to be very, very hard for people to get credit cards, personal loans, car loans. So we're going to see a huge contraction in companies' earnings because people aren't going to have the money to spend. And this is going to mean the stock price is going to have to come down. This contraction of credit conditions could particularly affect small businesses, the IIF said, along with causing high default rates and more zombie firms across the board. Well, that's what should happen, everyone. If you're a company and the only thing that's you know keeping you afloat is taking on more and more debt, and hey, maybe that's not too bad, but the big, big issue is when we have uh, the government giving huge amounts of stimulus, bailouts like the Federal Reserve bailed out all these uh, companies that they said was essential to the economy. That just means these big businesses just get bigger and small businesses can't possibly compete. So we need these huge zombie corporations to fail to give opportunities maybe you want to start a business. For example, maybe you want to start your own grocery chain or start your own 
mom and pop grocery store. But you can't do it with Walmart because they can just take on so much debt. And if they're going to face any issues, you better believe the US government is going to bail them out because they're going to say they're too big to fail. But what will happen one day, everyone, is it's going to go from too big to fail to too big to save. We're going to have corporations and banks go down and it's going to be trillions and trillions of dollars disappear. The government simply won't be able to afford to bail out, for example, $18 trillion worth of the banking deposits right now. So we have $305 trillion ticking time bomb, but we also got some more bad news for the banks today. So look at this, regional bank stocks fall after Yellen says more mergers necessary. Well, 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 everyone, I actually starting to see why the US government is letting these small banks fail. And I think you know as well, we saw what happened with JP Morgan, how they took over First Republic Bank. We also know what JP Morgan has been doing. They've been asking people, what political uh, institutions you associate with? What religion do you associate with? They're starting to ask a lot of invasive questions. And if they don't like whatever political party you're with, or they don't like your beliefs, well, then they can shut off your bank account. Now, imagine this. Imagine a world where we have a massive banking crisis and we have huge regulation. All the banks fail but the government lets one savior come in and buy up all these banks for pennies on the dollar. Imagine what kind of draconian measures they could introduce if there was just one bank and they said, you have to do this, you have to pull this political party, believe in this, you have to shop here, shop at these industries, otherwise you'll be debanked. And maybe could they sneak in a CBDC there as well? It's very, very possible and that's why we can't let it happen. So Yellen also reaffirmed the strength and soundness of the country's bank system. Uh, she'd been saying this since the first bank collapse. I I think we've had about four or five banks collapse now. With bank CEOs on Thursday in the aftermath of the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, and First Republic Bank. I wonder if these banks paid her millions and millions of dollars like what they did just before she became the US Treasury Secretary. Maybe that's after her term. So the KBW Regional Banking Index fell 2.2%, with shares of PacWest Corp and Western Alliance among the biggest losers as they shed 1.9 and 2.4% respectively, and Valley and National Bank Corp dropped 5.5%. Now, on top of this, we also got evidence of how I've been saying this banking crisis, which will lead to tighter credit conditions, with the cost of living crisis, meaning people aren't going to have money to spend, with high debt servicing costs, meaning people won't be able to have money to spend, well, we got more evidence that this has happened. So look at this, everyone. Foot Locker's 26% plunge. Guidance cut may signal trouble ahead for retailers. So this is proof, everyone, the consumer is being tapped out. Now, why this is so important for the stock market is, look what happened with Foot Locker. Their stock crashed at 27%. But the thing what happens with the Dow, with the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, it's a large five or 10 companies that have the most weight in the index. So it's not until people stop spending at those companies and they will stop spending them because they simply won't have the money. That's when we're going to see the stock market really crash. And then that will lead to more layoffs because one person's spending is another person's income. And then it starts to have a domino effect. Now this leads us to our last story. White House Republican team says no progress in debt ceiling talk. Now, we all know they're going to raise the debt ceiling, everyone, but this is going to cause a lot of uncertainty and turmoil in the markets up until the day uh, this gets approved. But again, even if the debt ceiling does get approved, do you know what this means? Well, that means the US government can issue more debt. How do they issue more debt? Well, they issue treasuries and bonds. And why are the banks crashing right now? Well, it's because these treasuries in these bonds that they had on their balance sheets have lost huge amounts of value because interest rates have gone up. Well, what do you think would adding new supply to the market do? That's right. It'll make those prices crash even more. So people, I know it's hard. I know people are losing patience. They've been saying, look, I've been waiting so much for this housing market crash, for this stock market crash. And the stock market did crash last year. The S&P lost nearly 35%. The Nasdaq crashed 40%. It did happen. Bitcoin crashed. I did actually predict it. But we have this short-term rally that's going on right now, this bear market rally. But people, when I look at all the fundamentals, it does not add up. We are not going to be in a bull market. At best, we may have stagflation where the market does nothing, I think, for a decade. We could have a lost decade. But all these people saying that the market's going to rally to all-time highs, the numbers, the fundamentals just don't add up to that. So I'm being very, very patient. Sometimes you have to wait 18 months, two years for these crashes to happen. The US housing market didn't bottom until three, four years after the 2007 peak. It actually did take four years for it to bottom. So you need to be patient. It will happen. And and you hope it doesn't crash overnight because, for example, if you can save up for four years and then you can buy at the bottom, well, then that means returns are going to be even greater than, say, for example, 
it crashes overnight, but then rebounds within a month, it's not going to give you much opportunity to buy the real mega dip. But everyone, what do you think about all this madness? Let me know down below. Now, again, I created a brand new newsletter. I'll be keeping you guys updated with the latest finance news, also my notes and research for these videos. So check the link in the description below. Now, for my law viewers and subscribers to watching, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.